What's up YouTube? Tony here, welcome back. If you've watched a few of my videos in the past, you might have heard me mention that the computer I'm using in this studio is an absolute dinosaur. But I do plan on fixing that problem soon. More on that in another video. I got this computer after I finished mixing the Fairweather Father EP, which, if I remember correctly, was released in 2011. I've upgraded it as much as I can over the years. I've added RAM to it, but I've still maxed out the motherboard at 8 gigs. I've added an SSD to help speed things up, as well as a disk drive to store my files. But the more I use this PC, the more often I reach its limits. And these days, I regularly get mixes coming my way that have anywhere from 50 to over 100 tracks in them. So before I get into the actual tips on showing you how to save and conserve your CPU, I'll show you this little tip for Reaper users. In Reaper, I've got this window always accessible right in my Docker. It's a performance meter window. By opening this up, you can scroll through and see exactly how much of your CPU is being used by each one of your tracks. I find this very helpful on a limited machine, or when you're dealing with very large track count mixes, because when your computer starts lagging and getting overloaded, you can go through and see exactly which tracks are the culprit. So you can find this performance window by going up to View, scrolling down until you see Performance Meter. So clicking on that will bring up this floating window, and if you want to have it more easily available, just right click anywhere on that window and select Dock Performance Meter in Docker. Once you do that, it'll show up right at the bottom of your screen, right next to your mixer and anything else you want to dock down there. More and more these days in home studios, producers are using virtual instruments so that you don't have to have an arsenal of guitar amps or room to record a full drum kit or an extra room in your house dedicated entirely to synthesizers. Now don't get me wrong, I would have each and every one of those things if I could. But seeing how I don't have an infinite budget, VSTIs work just fine. Now the great thing about VSTIs is that you can just constantly tweak your sound as you go. If you find yourself halfway through a production and the synth sound just isn't right, you can go into the plugin and tweak it until it is right. But a lot of these VSTIs take up quite a bit of your CPU when they're active. So what I like to do, as soon as I've decided on what sound I'm going to keep from this VSTI, is print the audio onto a separate track, and then disengage the plugin to save your CPU. So I'll show you how to do that with my drum track. So I've set my superior drummer channel to send audio to three different channels. We've got the kick channel here, the snare channel here, and the rest of the drums here. Now most of the time I would lay out all the different drums on separate tracks, have an overhead track, a room mic track, a track for each of the toms, but this was just a quick little song I threw together so I didn't bother with all that. So what you're going to do is arm your track for recording and then click on the arrow right next to where it says in. In this situation, we're going to scroll down to Record Output. And I just want to get a stereo channel of this, so we're going to choose Record Output Stereo. Now, I don't know if I've been using it wrong, but the Record Output Stereo Latency Compensated option has never worked for me. It always seems to be overcompensated, and each hit comes a little earlier than it's supposed to. So we're going to go to Record Output Stereo, and then record as you normally would. Now when I use this method, I make sure to deactivate any plugins I have on the channel that I'm going to be recording to. Because we're recording the output of this channel, if those plugins are active, you'll record their signal as well. So you can see that Superior Drummer is taking up between 3 and 4% of my CPU. So now that we have everything printed down, we can simply deactivate the Superior Drummer plugin, and we've just freed up 4% of our CPU. So I like to use this method with any of the VSTIs or amp sims that I use. And then if, worst case scenario, you don't like the sound that you printed down later on, you can always erase that track, fiddle around with the sounds in the VSTI a little more, and print it down again. Freezing your tracks is when you print the effects from your plugin chain onto the track itself. It's kind of similar to what we just did, but Reaper makes it pretty easy to freeze tracks from one channel to the waveform on that channel. So now that we've printed our drums channel down, I've turned the effects back on. I've got a uh, Shep 73 EQ on there. You can see it's already taking a little bit of time to load. So I've got Waves 1073 plugin on there, as well as Waves J37 tape plugin. And if we look on our performance meter here, between the two of them, they're using up 11 to almost 13% of my CPU. 
So Reaper makes it really easy to print these effects down to your waveforms. Just right click on the waveform and go down to apply track slash take effects to items as a new take. So in this situation, because it's a stereo track, we're gonna choose the top option. You also have options to choose mono output, multi-channel output, or MIDI output. So once you hit that, this progress window pops up. Once that's finished, it creates a new waveform in your take list and you can deactivate your plugins. Now the drums folder is taking up 0% of my CPU. I've just saved 12% of my CPU. Now just like with the last example I showed you, if you're ever not happy with the sound that you've come across, all you have to do is right click on the waveform, go down to take, delete active take, that'll bring it back to your original waveform, and then you can turn your effects back on and tweak them to your liking. Reverbs are generally a really big one. A lot of reverbs use up an intense amount of CPU, especially some of the newer and more powerful ones. Even this one that I have here, Little Plate by Sound Toys. It doesn't seem like there's much to it. There's three knobs and a switch that you can adjust. But if we look at my performance meter, that's taking up almost 8% of my CPU alone. So printing that down is pretty similar to printing down our VSTIs, but there is one small difference. So we're gonna start by creating a new track I usually label these the same as the track we're printing, but with RTN standing for return at the end of the name. So just like when we printed down the drums, we're gonna click the arrow underneath the in button, go to record output, stereo. And then we're gonna send the signal from the reverb track onto our return track by going to this routing box, clicking and dragging that over to the other channel. Here's where it gets to be a little different from printing down your VSTI. There's two ways that you can do this that'll keep the volume level of your return track the same as your volume level from the original reverb track. You can either do the send post fader and record with your return track's fader at zero, or you can select pre fader on the send, record it with the fader at zero anyways, and afterwards move the fader down to the same level as the original reverb track, which in this case would be negative 14.4 decibels. I'm gonna go with the post fader option because it's just a little bit easier for me. And once you've got that all set up, record it like you would normally record anything else. Once you're done tracking that down, unarm your record track, and then you can mute your reverb channel and disable the effects on it. So if we go back to our performance window here, our drum reverb track is now down to 0%. And in the same way as everything else, if you're unhappy with the sound of that reverb later on, you can always delete the track that you printed down, tweak your reverb parameters a little bit, and print it down again. Is it convenient to mix this way? Not really, but sometimes you don't have a choice whether your computer isn't quite up to the task or you're working on a mix that's too big for your system to handle. Using these three tips can help you really clear up some CPU space. Well guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked this video and would like to see more content like this one, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you get notified anytime I release new content. Thanks again for tuning in guys. We'll see you next time.